This is Koh Tao, a beautiful tropical island on the eastern coast of Thailand. It's been known as Fisherman Island, a gruesome prison, a death island, and now a diving paradise. Why is that? What happened? In this video you'll find out. We'll talk about the best beaches in Koh Tao, things you can do here, we'll take a little dig into its history and then talk about how the island is doing now. Well, probably the first thing that everyone wants to know about is the beaches of Koh Tao. It is a small island, but it's got a surprisingly interesting landscape with multiple hills and bays. This is a rather unique feature of this island. Normally when you go to these tropical islands, most of the beaches will look kind of the same, but not in Koh Tao. For example, this is the very first beach where everyone usually ends up, Sairi Beach. It's just great, a long 1.7 km stretch of sand with crystal blue water and amazing sunsets. In a way, this is a perfect beach. It has numerous cafes and bars located right by the side of it, a gorgeous sunset view, and the main town is located right along it, so the beach is in super easy access. Honestly, this is the place. Obviously, don't limit yourself only to it, there's a lot more to explore on this island. But if you're looking for a place with a fair balance of entertainment and nature, Sairi Beach is your spot. Another beach that you can visit is Freedom Beach. It's only about a 15 minute ride from Sairi, but it's very different. It is a small beach with a line of trees planted right at the edge of the sand. I personally liked it because it gave a natural shade from the sun, but some people complained that it just blocked the view. To enter this beach you need to pay 50 baht and then you get access to free sun baths and a small bay. There is only one cafe that overlooks the beach. It is slightly better for snorkeling than Sairi, but you would probably need to swim around 40-50 meters away from the shore to see some fish. Overall, there is a nice place with a very unusual concept, but it was a bit crowded, so it wasn't my favorite. The next beach, or more like a beach strip, is located on Nang Yuan Island. You have to take a boat cruise to reach it. It is private, and the time you can spend there is rather limited, but I'd say it's worth it. Once you get there, you find yourself between two small islands with a thin strip of sand between them. This is rather extraordinary, and as the tide rises, the beach keeps shrinking. It's probably not an ideal place for sunbathing or relaxing on the sand. It is a rather popular tourist destination, and crowds of people keep on disturbing you at all times. However, the best thing about it is that the sea life, that is literally 5 meters away from the beach. This place is really good for snorkeling, one of the best in this area. Also, if you want an Instagram worthy photo, you can climb one of those twin islands. The view is supposed to be nice, but I never reached it because it was way too crowded. Next spot is Mango Bay. It is probably the most difficult place to reach. The northern part of the island has the tallest hill of this archipelago, which is not very high, only around 300 meters, but hiking to it can be exhausting, especially in the hot and humid climate of Thailand. The road to it is also challenging, slippery and muddy. I've seen some people falling off their bikes on the way. I almost made it there, but I was dissuaded by the tourists who were leaving the beach. They said that you need to climb a lot of stairs to get there, and then you find yourself on a deserted beach with no cafes or even places to buy a drink. It does look beautiful, but I decided to use my drone to explore it instead of climbing. Honestly, I wouldn't recommend going there unless you're really up for a physical challenge. After this I head to another spot which is called Tanote Bay. This is probably my second favorite beach on this island. It has a strong Mediterranean vibe, maybe because of the style of buildings and trees with blooming pink flowers that remind me of Italy or Greece. 
It is lovely. There is plenty of space for everyone. It is calm and quiet. The views are wonderful and the water is clean. It is about 13 minutes ride from Sairu Beach. Don't miss it. The last beaches I want to mention are Shark Bay and Shalok Bankau Bay. They are close to each other, separated by a cliff that offers a beautiful view of these bays. They are similar and both are nice places to relax. There are some restaurants around them to get food and drinks. The beaches are just great, they are home to many sea turtles that can be easily found there. One of the best ways to see all these beaches in one go is by taking an island boat cruise. These tours usually start at Sairi Beach, go to Nangyuan Island and then around Koh Tao. However, that depends on the weather. The day I took the boat tour, the weather was rough and we couldn't go around the island. The sea was just too choppy. So I first went to Nangyuan and then came back to the south to see Shark Bay. I think the snorkeling tour is a must do, even if you are scuba diving. I talked to local scuba divers and they said that during these snorkeling tours you can sometimes see things that can't be observed during a deep dive. For example, turtles mainly live in shallow waters and wander long distances, which makes them easier to spot with a snorkel. I also saw many sharks on my snorkeling tour, while I saw none when I was scuba diving. Snorkeling tour Contao was great, the marine life is very diverse, the fish are as colorful as you can imagine, the corals look magnificent. I was most excited to see the sea turtles and sharks. The turtles were amazing, beautiful creatures, they were minding their own business while tourists couldn't get enough of them and kept swimming around and disturbing them. I felt sorry for them and guilty of bothering them too. Sharks were really cool too. There used to be bull sharks that were quite dangerous for people, but they apparently left Kotao because the water was too warm. So all I could see were these sneaky black tip reef sharks. They're usually harmless and don't see humans as their prey. A bit of an unexpected threat was this little fella called Triggerfish. It grows pretty big, up to 50 centimeters long. This one in the shot is called a titan triggerfish and it can be very aggressive, especially when it is guarding its eggs. My GoPro didn't capture the perspective well, but that fish was actually swimming towards me, aiming for a bite. Triggerfish normally eat shells, their jaws are powerful and can easily crush them. If you enter their breeding area, they will attack and try to bite you, so please be careful, they can be vicious. I got attacked by them a couple of times, it was no fun. I've read that their territory extends in a cone from the nest to the surface, so if a trigger fish attacks, instead of swimming to the surface, it is better to swim horizontally away from the nest to avoid their nasty bites. Okay, and now what are all those prison death island stories are all about? Kota was a simple fisherman's village for a long time, up until the 20th century. Then things started to change. The first major event in the island's history was in 1933, when King Chulalong Khan visited Kotao and left his monogram on a huge boulder near Sairi Beach. This stone is still worshipped today. Soon after that joyful event, they opened a political prison on the island, which is, as you can imagine, was not a very pleasant place to be. The prisoners suffered from heat, humidity, hunger and malaria. Luckily, it did not last for long and in 1947 all prisoners were released and Kota was deserted again until the 1980s when foreign travelers began to explore this place. The island gradually grew and developed and became a popular tourist destination until 2014 when two British tourists were brutally murdered there. This incident sparked a lot of media attention and controversy. At the end of the investigation, two Burmese migrant workers were arrested, convicted and sentenced to death, while the island was dubbed as Death Island. This incident had a huge impact on the daily life of the island, as the number of tourists dropped significantly and it took a long time for the island to recover from this. Now, the island is very safe and peaceful. I felt much safer here than any other place in Thailand. Because most of the people who come here are interested in diving and wildlife, 
This is a special kind of crowd, usually young and sporty or families with children, who are not here to get drunk and high every day, but to do something different. At the same time, Kotao is not boring at all. There are plenty of bars, restaurants and cafes here, but they're rather relaxed and well-balanced. The food options are great too, you can find dishes from various cuisines, whether cheap or expensive, local or foreign. After eating, you can enjoy a glass of wine or beer near the beach and then go to one of the bars that stay open late. The nightlife scene here is limited, it's not a party island, but if you want to celebrate your new diving license, you can easily find a place for some fun. Just a few words about moving around. Motorbikes are very common around the whole Thailand, and the Koh Tao is no exception. They are the main mode of transportation here, and almost everyone rides them. You can also use a motorbike or a car taxi if you don't want to ride a motorbike yourself. The roads here are hilly and windy, usually safe, but sometimes tricky because of the terrain and occasional tropical downpours. I would always recommend being careful with the motorbikes, because even a small accident at a low speed can easily ruin your holiday. On the other hand, motorbikes give you a lot of freedom, and Koh Tao is ideal for motorbike exploration. The distances here are short and rarely takes more than 20 minutes to get from one place to another. There are many beaches here and you might want to visit them all, and there's no better way to do that than by bike. The last chapter of this video I want to dedicate to my scuba diving experience. The reason it is the very last chapter of this video is because I simply don't have any footage of it. Just these two clips where we're on our way to the first dives. Learning to scuba dive was interesting and complex, so I had to read quite a bit and we had theory and practice lessons. There was no time to film anything and we were not allowed to take cameras on our first dives, but I still want to share it with you. It was my first time scuba diving and I was skeptical at first. I love snorkeling and scuba diving seemed like an expensive activity that I could do for free with my snorkel and fins. But I had a long holiday, so I decided to try something new. There were many diving schools to choose from and they all seemed good. I picked Rocktopus School because I liked their office, team, attitude and approach. The sessions were great, very informative and clear. I learned scuba diving pretty quickly. After practicing in a pool, we went for our first diving day, which was very exciting. A bit of a strange thing happened to me there. I almost had a panic attack. Uh, for some reason, I felt very uneasy being 9 meters underwater, totally relying on that little pipe to breathe. After the first day, I was worried and I didn't enjoy my first diving experience much. But the second day was much better. The sea was rough, almost stormy, and it was raining, but once we got into the water, everything was calm. It was magical and peaceful. It felt like flying through the mountains, surrounded by magnificent fish and colorful corals. It was an absolutely unbelievable experience. In the end, I loved it and I wanted to do more. Koh Tao is a great place to get your first diving license. The water here is warm and clear. There is a lot of underwater sea life to observe. At the same time, there is nothing too extreme or dangerous to worry about. And this will do for now. Koh Tao is simply lovely. It is a small, beautiful island, very easy to explore, with very beautiful beaches, really nice spots for snorkeling, next level scuba diving. It's got really nice food options, there are some small bars here and there. It is fun, but it's not noisy and busy. So yeah, I hope you'll be able to go there one time. It's just great. Well, for now, this will do. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Please uh, like, subscribe, leave a comment section down below, let me know what you think about the video, where would you like to go, what was the best beach, uh, maybe you'd like to know something else, please tell me, I'd love to know. Well for now, this will do, thanks all for watching, bye and see you soon.